Morning everyone. Thank you for joining us today for our webinar, Replace Paper-Based Processes with Digital Document Management and Workflow. Uh, my name's Chris and I'm joined by my colleague Damien as well, who will take us through a quick demo later on in the webinar with our own uh, document management solution, DocuWare. So just before we kick off, uh, you'll notice probably on the right hand side that there's a go to webinar toolbar. And in there, you've got the opportunity to make the webinar full screen if you want to, and also ask any questions at the bottom. And Damon and myself will do our best to get through as many of those questions as we can at the end of the webinar. Okay, so just a, um, a quick intro. I won't spend a lot of time on this, but just to set the scene a little bit. So here at AMS, um, we've been implementing document management for quite a few years now. And uh, about five, six years ago, we decided to team up with a company called DocuWare. Now, DocuWare are the world's leading um, document management solution provider and uh, have been around for 30 years or so. Now, we decided to team up with DocuWare because the licensing and the costs are very flexible and very friendly for us, but also our customers. And also, the solution has been developed over many years upon customer requirements. So, what is electronic document management, or EDM abbreviated, and how can it actually drive your business forward? Well, up on the screen are a few key drivers that we hear every day when talking to our customers and our contacts. But really, it comes down to three main things and that's security, efficiency, and access. So security, being able to secure business documentation down to a user level with granular permissions, and Damien will touch on that a little bit later in the demo. Efficiency, being able to make processes more efficient by pushing those documents electronically and automatically throughout the business as part of a process. It also enables managers and leaders to be able to proactively manage the process and understand where documents are in the process at any one point. And access to documents. Just because we're out on a customer site or seeing a supplier, um, perhaps we're on holiday or perhaps we're even off sick, it doesn't mean that a process in head office should have to stop. We should be able to access these documents but also carry out actions and make decisions on these documents as well. So I thought that was just a nice quick introduction to the sorts of drivers that we see when talking to our own customers and uh, contacts here at AMS. So when our customers come to implement an electronic document management solution, you can approach it or they can approach it in several different ways. So in most cases, people tend to start by implementing a secure centralized electronic archive. So perhaps um, you may have documents in filing cabinets mixed in with network shares, mixed in with information stored within users' email inboxes. But if you can have all this information centrally, it just makes life easier. So if a customer or supplier calls out of an inquiry, you have the information to hand within a couple of clicks. And this is something you'll see a bit later on as well on Damien's demo. Now, typically, once the electronic archive is in place, um, the customer may want to implement some electronic workflow. So you've got the document securely and electronically in the central archive, but what do you actually want to do with them? Do you want to push them on to a customer or to a supplier or perhaps to a colleague for approval or for rejection? So typically, businesses would then look to integrate or implement, sorry, the automated electronic workflow. Now, for some of our customers, once they've got the archive set up and once they've got the workflows in place, they may then look to integrate DocuWare with other applications. And this is something that we can talk to you about in a bit more detail if you want to. We've got a full development team here at AMS and DocuWare as a product has an API. But I suppose really it's the job of businesses like ours to hold your hand throughout this process and guide you commercially or technically throughout the process. So what I'd love to do now 
is just get your opinion on which benefits are most important to you when looking into electronic document management. Now, the GoToWebinar um, software allows me to launch a poll, which I'll do now. And if you're able just to select one or multiple of these options, and I'll come back in a, in a minute or two, and uh, we'll have a look at the results and we'll talk through them. Okay, quite a few responses coming in, so thanks very much for that. Okay, all right, just, I'm just going to close this poll quickly. Let's have a quick look and share the results. Brilliant, so it looks like the winner only just is faster access to information um, in the office or remotely, um, which is great. And it's something that we hear more and more, um, being able to access information quicker, whether we're in the office or out of the office is very important to be able to make decisions quicker. Um, followed by protection from data and information loss. Of course, we're hearing this more and more as well, especially in the wake of GDPR. So being able to protect the information and control access to that information is vital. So thanks for doing that, everyone. That's appreciated. I'm just going to hide that poll. So we should go back to the, the presentation now. Brilliant. Um, OK. So I think that's probably enough um, from me for the start of the web webinar and the intro. I'll now pass you over to Damien. He'll take you through um, a quick intro to DocuWare. We're going to focus on a couple of different processes, um, but Damien will talk you through those, and uh, I'll come back at the end and summarise. Great. Thanks, Chris. So today I'm going to show some of the mo most popular features uh, when using DocuWare in uh, finance, HR, and project management. Now, these are just to kind of raise some ideas about how DocuWare might be able to help you, um, but it relates to any kind of document process or department. So we're gonna start off with a basic digital archive, so storing and retrieving documents. And the feature I'm gonna to show today is intelligent indexing. Now, as you can see, DocuWare is a web-based application, so you don't need to install any software on your computer. And it also means that you can access documents wherever you are, as long as you have an internet connection. They can capture documents into the document tray. So this is the first tab. We'll go through the others a bit later. But the document tray is like your in-tray on your desk. And you can capture documents into the in-tray either by scanning them, you can import from a folder, and you can also save documents from Outlook using the Connect to Outlook connector. So here are some documents we've captured already. You'll notice they're green. This is because the intelligent indexing AI engine in DocuWare has read the document, turned that document into data, and then tried to understand that data so that it can try and do the hard work for you and index the documents. So if I go ahead and select these, and just go ahead and install, and we can select different filing cabinets from the store option. Now, when we select the documents, you'll notice it was green. Um, this is because the intelligent indexing engine is very confident that it's captured the information correctly. Now, if I just cycle through the um, index fields on the left-hand side, you can see in the document on the right-hand side, those fields are highlighted. So it just gives you that opportunity to visually check that DocuWare has captured the information correctly. Now, to teach DocuWare, let's say it didn't capture the invoice number. So to teach it so that it will capture the information next time and recognize the pattern on this particular invoice, we can just click on that piece of information. We don't need to type it, we just kind of click on it because DocuWare has now turned that document into data. And again, we can just visually check that this one is correct as well. And we can go ahead and store. So rather than having to collect pieces of paper and kind of walk them to a filing cabinet, 
With intelligent indexing, it just makes it really quick to file those documents away electronically and securely. You'll probably have noticed that the lists option uh, popped up and the tasks option popped up with uh, an extra number, and we'll kind of go through that in a minute. But to start off with, we're just looking at a simple digital archive. So once you've stored those documents, you might need to search for them, uh, maybe in relation to a telephone query. So rather than having to kind of rifle through archive boxes or filing cabinets, you could just select the document type. So we've just stored two invoices. Um, again, you can select from the list, or if you start typing, DocuWare will try and auto-complete that value for you. So we can just click on search. And from our desk, whether we're in the office or working from home, we can quickly access that document and maybe do something with it. So I don't know if you can see, but there's a tool palette now on the left-hand side. You could add annotations to the document if you wanted to, print it, you could email it, or you could download it, or whatever you want to do. But it just gives you a way to maybe answer that query while you're still on the phone, and also maybe email a copy of that invoice to the person making that inquiry. Now, I talked about intelligent indexing a bit, kind of turning documents into data. What that also means is you can now search for the contents. So let's say you were searching for a particular name. Um, that would then search for each of the documents, return documents that had that name contained in it. And if we double click the invoice, we can see the invoice is returned and the word that we've searched for is highlighted. So that's just a really simple search and retrieval process using DocuWare as a digital archive. Now, as well as normal searches called kind of on the fly searches, we've also got lists. So those are saved searches. Now, when we stored those documents, we stored them with a status and we stored them with a status of unassigned. So we can track what's happening. And again, this is totally configurable. You can make up your own saved searches as lists but it's quite a handy way of just keeping an eye on documents as they move through the business. So we know that there's three invoices that are unassigned. These are the two that we've just stored. And if we click on tasks, we're just going to go through a simple invoice approval. And um, so if we take the first document, you might want to assign that to a particular person to authorize. And in the background, DocuWare is going to email those managers and just say, hi, you know, you've got um, an invoice to authorize uh, with a link to the document. Now we can see them coming back into the system. Um, because I've, I'm an administrator on here, I can not only see my tasks, but I can also monitor tasks. So this is a really handy way of just having a high level of overview of everything that's going on within the organization. So you can see each of the tasks you can see who they're with, so you can see this one is with the HR manager for approval. Now, I've been using these options down here to you know, approve uh, or reject or you know, choose an authorizer, but you can also use stamps. Um, you can see the stamp that was applied on the previous action, but it just provides a visual history and representation of the previous actions that have happened to that document. Now, this doesn't change the original document. You still maintain the, um, the integrity of that original file. These are just kind of almost like sticky notes on the top. So if you go ahead and approve this one as well, so this was the second invoice we stored. If you, say, rejected it, you'd have the option to add comments. But again, you can add as many choices as you like and whatever text options you like as well. So here's the invoice that we approved, and we can just select complete or pay or whatever the process might be in your business. And that will then terminate the workflow. But that was just an example of a really simple workflow to see how a document could move through the business electronically rather than physically. 
Now, the next thing we were going to show, actually, just really quickly, if I go to the invoice that we have rejected, we can actually see the history of that document and each action that has been performed. So if you want to check what's happened, you could see that this particular user rejected the invoice at this time. So the next thing I was going to show was a more enhanced workflow. So before we used intelligent indexing to capture header information in the invoice. And now what we're going to do now is capture the line item data. So if I just select this invoice and click on store. Now there might be a couple of reasons why you want to capture the line item data as well as the um, uh, the header information. So here we've got the header information. Let me just refresh that a second. There we go. So there might be a reason why you want to capture the header information and the line item data. Um, such as possibly uh, coding the invoice, so applying general ledger codes to each of the line items or assigning them a cost center, and just to kind of reference those in your finance package. And so if we go down here, we can see if I select one of these options, again, it will highlight this whole table and it will highlight that value as well. And DocuWare can learn how to capture this information and in what order to capture it. So it can be completely flexible and you can choose which options you want to capture. So again, we can just go ahead and check these values and click on store. And you've probably seen the list and the tasks um, number increase as well. Again, I've just put a little uh, saved search so I can see how many pending invoices I have. You might want to see how many approved invoices you have or how many are due to pay this week. But these are literally just a search that's been saved and then you can customize yourself. So if I go to tasks and I'll go to the kind of enhanced invoice approval process, we can see here we have an invoice to code. So typically, um, users might actually just write the GL coding in the line item of the invoice, but here we can actually add it to the electronic file. And you can link these to like a spreadsheet, which might be a list of codes or it might be a list of descriptions, however you want that to work. And we'll just apply this to a few different cost centers. And it might be because one department's responsible for paying part of the invoice and another department's responsible for paying another part. So we'll just go ahead and code one more invoice. Um, you could also make these fields mandatory to force the person who's coding the invoice to code all of the options. And also you could add a value at the end, which would decrease based on the amount that that person had um, assigned to that particular cost center. So once an invoice is, has been coded, Generally, the next stage will be to approve the invoice. However, you will notice that we've got one here that's gone straight to pay. And the reason this one's gone straight to pay is it's gone through a matching process. Now, this could be a two-way matching process like we have here, matching an invoice against a purchase order, or you could match it against, a, say, a delivery note as well. But you can match a document against any other documents or piece of information uh, on the system. So you can go ahead and see, here's the corresponding purchase order, the numbers match, and the amounts match, and we can just go ahead and pay that.
And now we can see the other invoice that we coded. Now that's out to um, the marketing manager to approve. And one of the handy things in DocuWare is the reassign option. So let's say you're keeping an eye on what invoices have been received, who they're with for authorization. If that person's on a holiday, you could then reassign it quite easily to another user and just kind of choose them in here. But this one's all okay, so we'll just go ahead and approve that. So once they've been approved, then they will come back through to pay. And the next stage in the process might be uh, somebody having to type that information into a finance package. So what we've created is um, a, a, an export tool which will export the data from DocuWare into a CSV file. And we can show that now. So if I just open up. Here's the export tool. So you'll see we've got a couple of uh, profiles here. So we're going to use the um, line item export. Let's just double check that those invoices have been completed. Now, if we run this report, DocuWare is going to export the information, line item data, GL codes, amounts, that kind of thing, into the CSV file. So this could be a way of integrating with your other applications like Sage or SAP. Uh, they could be watching for this file. And then importing the data in this file. So it just means that it's uh, an easy way to get around having to uh, input all that information yourself. And you can choose what to capture as well. So you can see we've captured the quantity, the description, and the item number. So this might also be useful for things like stock and ordering systems. So now we've finished the finance side of things, um, I was going to show some examples within an HR. And the feature I think that's uh, really useful is DocuWare Forms. So for a typical onboarding process, I'm going to use these forms to show how that might work in an HR role. So if you want to employ somebody, typically you might have like an authority to recruit form or a vacancy request form. Um, and you can create these yourself, they're really easy and you can choose different um, kind of handles on here. So this is just a list, so the requisition raised by, um, this might be the kind of department manager or depot manager, so we can select that. These fields can also be dynamic, um, so we've got a couple of radio buttons here. If I select this one, you can see a new field pops up. If I select the other one, it goes away. So you can dynamically control what information you want to collect from the person filling out the form. So I'll just select the department as well. And you can make, again make these fields mandatory or optional. All of this information becomes data you can capture. Um, if I put in a salary as well, a little high. And so maybe you want to use this information to control what happens to the form next. So based on the person that's requested the new employee, the department they've requested uh, the employee for, and maybe the annual salary that you're looking to pay, DocuA can make decisions as to who it should email to let them know um, that, let's say, John Smith wants a new warehouse employee in Bath. So if we pretend that that whole process has been completed, the relevant area manager has um, signed off on employing that, that person, we can then go through the hiring process. So we've got here an email from a guy called Peter uh, looking for a job and using the Connect to Outlook DocuWare connector, we can store that straight into DocuWare. 
So this can be a really handy way of securely storing important emails and important email attachments. Um, but we're going to use this for this particular process as an example. So we were uh, recruiting for the role in accounting. This is for Asa Strom. And this was an application. So this is one example where we haven't had to save it to the document tray before we then index and store in DocuWare. And you can see that the uh, email is marked as stored in DocuWare. You can either mark it or you can delete the attachment or you can delete the whole email. It's kind of your choice as to how that would work for you. So if you go back to DocuWare, we can see here that we have our lists again. So we've got pending vacancy requests, the one we've just submitted. Um, you could also keep an eye on maybe training. So maybe people have different certification they have to maintain. And here's the application that we've just received to review. So if we just open that. And let's say we're going to invite Peter for an interview. Uh, we can invite him, we can choose a date. Let's say it's next week. And confirm that. Now, whereas before DocuWare was moving a docu document around the business for authorization, this is actually going to take all of the information that we've entered and automatically send an email to Peter uh, using dynamic fields from that information. So if we go back to email, we can see we've also got Peter's email account here. And if we select his inbox, in a few moments we should receive an email saying, hi Peter, you know, you've been invited for an interview on this particular date. So it's DocuWare that's automatically created and sent this email. And if we go back to the web browser, we can confirm the interview results. Let's say the interview's gone well, Peter looks like a good fit. And again, we can use a stamp or the buttons on the left-hand side. Now, once we've kind of confirmed that uh, we want to offer Peter's job, in a few moments we will receive an email uh, to say, hi, you know, you've been um, successful in your application and would you fill out this new starter form? So if I go here, we have the new starter form available. And again, this is an example of DocuWare forms and where it can help your business. So, these forms can be made available to uh, employees of the company only, or you could make them public so that people outside of the organization can fill them in. Um, that might be for, let's say, a new supplier onboarding form or a request for something. Um, in this situation, we're just using it for the new employee. You can also upload files to the form. You can apply a signature, and we'll click on Submit. One of the other things that we can do is because you've entered in information which is now used as data within DocuWare, we can extract that data and do something with it. Um, so a new starter quite often will have to fill out multiple forms, uh, quite often the same information on multiple forms, and it's frustrating for the candidate as well as HR processing that. What DocuWare can do in the background is it can take all this information and populate all of the documents that you need, the emergency contact form, the contract, that kind of thing. Uh, so if we go back here, we'll see a task coming up soon just to kind of verify the new employee, assign them a personnel number, confirm their department allocation, start date, And maybe number of holiday days per year. 
And if you then had to enter that information into an HR application, you could do the same as we did with finance and use the export tool to export that data out of the system. So now we've covered the HR process and kind of hopefully shown how forms could be useful. The next thing I was going to show was project management. And the example I'm using is to cover uh, version control. Now this could be for project management, it could be for contracts, it could be any document where you need to keep a track of different versions and make sure the people involved are working from the correct version. So uh, as an example, we're just going to use a CAD file here, uh, store into the project management filing cabinet. Choose the document type, so we'll just classify this as a drawing. Now, earlier we looked at the search option where you can kind of search in each of the filing cabinets. We also have folders, and this is just a view. It's not like physical folders. So we can have a look at the folder structure for HR. So we can have a look at the electronic personnel record that we created earlier for Peter Strom, and the starter form that was stored. And we can also have a look at the project management folder. So I'm just going project management. So you can see that um, a folder has automatically been created for this particular project. So now there is like a central repository for everybody involved with that project to store documents, view documents, just have a central point of access, uh, regardless of where you are in the world. So we can have a look at this particular drawing. And let's say the architect has decided to make a change. You could check that out. Normally you check it out to the file system so that you could open it in your uh, CAD application and make the relevant changes. I'm kind of cheating here, so I'm going to just check it out to my basket in order that I can check it back in. Now you would set whether it's a major or a minor version change and add some notes. Now, once that change has been submitted, you might need to notify people involved with the project. So DocuWare, as part of that workflow, will notify a group, which will be the project workers. And in a few minutes, we should see an email coming through just saying that there is a uh, drawing that is in review. And there will also be an open task, if we just refresh this. effectively saying that there has been a change to this document. So here we go. So we can see that the um, document is in here. So we can approve the changes. Uh, there'll also be an email in here in a moment, just saying that there's, here we go, there's a drawing for this project that is in review, just to make people aware uh, so not working from the wrong document. We could go in here, you could add some annotations, or maybe just kind of go ahead and approve those changes. I'll do that with a stamp this time. And if you wanted to go back and have a look at the previous versions of that document, we could go back into the project folder. and have a look at the version overview. That way you can see the current version, any new comments, the previous versions. 
and you could also have a look at the history of that document. So any actions that have been uh, applied to that document, who applied them, when they applied them, and also the document history, who's opened that document, who's changed that document. Um, there's a full audit trail of every action. Now that's it for the demo. Um, I've only covered a few of the key features. So if it's raised any ideas um, and you want something a bit more focused to your business, please let us know and I'll hand back to Chris. Brilliant. Thanks, Damien. Um, so as Damien mentioned, they really just scratched the surface and picked on a, a couple of different departments and processes. But um, anything you have in mind that you want to discuss, obviously, please feel free to, to get in contact. Um, so just to finish off the, the webinar, um, I wanted to run through three very, very quick customer examples. Now, typically when we do these um, slides, we put um, a couple of sort of blue chip names on there that use DocuWare, but I've picked these organizations because they're projects that Damien and I have worked on um, re quite recently, over the last year or so. So for the feature, um, it's all about automating the HR onboard process. So we ended up replacing a traditional paper form called the Authority to Recruit form, and we made it a web form, a little bit like the, the example Damien gave you a second ago on the demo. Um, we also implemented a number of workflows between um, different depots and um, area managers and then back to HR and the head office for processing. And really, the crux of it is that they've managed to cut down on their HR admin time quite dramatically. Um, Pool Bay, for these guys, it was all about transforming, transforming their finance department. And um, we managed to do that by using DocuWare workflow to automate some of their administration tasks. And um, the end result is that users don't have to worry about huge amounts of paperwork on their desks. And AWS or Advanced Waste Solutions, a very similar project to Paul Bay. This was really down to the sheer amount of paperwork in finance and the processing department. Um, before we implemented DocuWare, there was a, a trolley wheeled round with huge packs of paper containing invoicing and support, invoices, sorry, and supporting documents. And uh, we've just mirrored their process, but electronically. So now all the information is transferred through DocuWare and automatically. They process the documents within DocuWare, and they no longer have to worry about um, sort of keeping the, the huge filing cabinets they have in the office or paying a company to come in and back scan and uh, destroy those documents after a certain time frame. So three very quick examples there, um, just to show you how DocuWare can be used um, in real life. So that's the end of the webinar, everyone. And we do appreciate your time, and thank you for viewing it. Um, so if you do want to look at DocuWare with us, there's a couple of different options for you. You can do something like a document audit, where we, we tend to look at a particular process you have in mind, understand the people and the documents and the, the bottlenecks uh, or the challenges that you see. And then we go away and create a, a little document that details the process as we understand it currently, but also explains how DocuWare could address the requirement if you were to go down that road. Um, we also give you a rough idea, of course, of the cost involved. But by far the most popular option for addressing or looking into DocuWare with us is with one of our personalized bespoke demos. Um, again, it's completely free and it works in a, a very similar way to the document audit. We would pick on a particular process, understand the people involved, the documents involved, where you see the challenges to be. Typically, we would grab some example documents as well. We would then go away and create you a bespoke personalized demo. Now, by all means, it certainly won't be the finished product, but what it will do is give you a great insight to how DocuWare can address some of these challenges for you. Of course, we are available on the phone and in meetings and in web meetings if you need us. And if you do want to get in contact, there are some contact uh, details up on the screen at the moment. But um, that concludes the webinar. So thanks again for your time, everyone. And I think what we'll do now is we'll go through some of the, the questions that we've received um, over the course of the webinar. So we've got a question here. Um, and that is, are there any mobile apps? So yeah, I, I can take that. And so yeah, absolutely. Uh, one of the key things we talked about was access. So having access to the documents you've stored and also uh, performing workflow applications. And to make that easy, 
there are apps for iOS and Android. So you can do that from your phone or your iPad or your tablet or whatever. And there's actually two apps. So there's a DocuWare app for um, searching for documents and performing workflow actions. And there's also a paper scan app. So you can capture documents with your camera and uh, kind of upload them to DocuWare. Great, thanks Damien. Um, one here from Gary, can the system automatically delete documents? Uh, yes, it can. So um, document retention periods within DocuWare, um, you can set up that documents get deleted after a certain time period automatically. So you, you don't have to worry about doing that yourself or with um, paper format, you don't have to worry about paying a, a company to come in and securely dispose of those documents for you. That will happen automatically. The deletion profiles as well in DocuWare are really good. So rather than just deleting the documents in a filing cabinet or deleting documents of a particular type, you could maybe delete, delete invoices that are of a category supplier after three years if they're over 500 pounds or whatever that might be. But you can create quite a detailed document purging profile uh, and you can create several of them. So it's quite, um, quite a com comprehensive um, feature in there. Brilliant, we've got another question here. Um, can we see any of the setup process, i.e. the HR process, workflow, and decision trees? Um, Paul, yes, yes we can. Um, we could either go through that now, or we could, uh, might be best to organize maybe a separate session to go through that with you. Um, so one of us will make contact after the webinar, and uh, we'll organize a quick sort of 15 minute session with you to show you remotely. Um, we've got one here. Is this cloud or on-premise? Um, the answer to that is it can be both. Um, so the cloud solution, I would say we implement more than the on-premise um, because it's very, very simple and you tend to get all of the functionality so it, it future-proofs any potential rollout of the solution that you want. Of course, some customers um, have very strict IG policies and dictate that uh, the solution may have to be on-premise and that's absolutely fine as well. And if you want to discuss that in more detail, of course, we can be given contact afterwards. And it's, it's worth mentioning, um, I know you said I was going to cover it in the webinar about security, and I, I realized it didn't really, but the, the cloud is, is incredibly secure. DocuWare have um, you know, a raft of very high profile customers using this for business critical information. Everything is encrypted in transit and at rest using 256-bit AES encryption. Um, and it is only stored within the EU. So the main data centers are in Dublin and backed up to the Netherlands. So it's incredibly secure um, and you can kind of trust it with your um, business critical documents. Right, thanks Damien. Um, what if we switch supplier in the future? Can the documents be retrieved? Yeah, sure. So um, it's a really important thing with document management is you own your own information. So those are your documents and you can download and export them at any time you wish. We also provide services. Um, they may be chargeable depending on how you want us to export them. Um, so you can export them for free or we might be able to export them with the documents and the metadata, so like the index information associated with those documents, if you chose to do something with them in the future. But absolutely, you own your own information and you can export it. Great, thanks. And um, so we've got one more here. Uh, do you integrate with Sage? Um, yeah, so although we don't have like a native application uh, to integrate with Sage, what we do provide is the export utility to um, export the data from documents to provide more of a universal integration with uh, applications such as Sage and we've integrated with Sage. We also at the end of last year did quite a comprehensive integration with SAP using our export tool to map the data to other tables and databases and what have you. And it actually makes it a lot easier rather than having to worry about uh, compatibility versions of different um, different versions of uh, Sage or SAP, or whatever they might be. But yeah, absolutely, we can integrate with Sage and other finance applications. Brilliant. Okay, I think that's um, the end of all the questions. So again, thank you to everyone that's viewed the webinar. We appreciate your time. And uh, thanks again. Of course, if you do want to get in contact, please feel free to. And there is a short survey that comes up afterwards. If you be kind enough to let us know your thoughts, um, what we did well, what we didn't do so well. Um, it always helps us improve for the next one. And uh, many thanks.